pieces, well if it's a 200 gram pack, I cut two pieces of saran wrap. Instead of using this package, we're going to store the clay in plastic wrap. And for the 200 gram, I'm going to end up with two balls, so I need two pieces of the wrap. So, okay, this outer package really is just for making it look pretty. So we're going to cut that off and take out the instructions. This has got some information on it that you might find handy. So you might want to look that over. And then the clay comes in a sealed container. Now this is airtight, so this is safe to just leave sitting. What I'm going to do is, um, there's, a, there's a little Ziploc on here, so I guess you're supposed to open this and, and reseal it. But I need to store it in the plastic wrap because the air needs to be completely excluded so that we don't have any um, oxidation. So um, now before I even open this or touch the clay, I need to condition my hands because the clay is going to want to stick very aggressively to my fingers. So I'm going to use a release. There's all sorts of different things you can use as a release so that the clay doesn't stick to your hand. Some people like olive oil, um, badger balm, um, Burt's Bees. There's a number of different brands. We have our own brands of um, releases for, for made for metal clay. One of them is Slick. The other one is Claymate. Um, I happen to like Claymate best for bronze clay on my hands. It works really well. So I just get a little bit of the Claymate and I'm going to cover my fingers with it. Now I want to, anywhere the clay is going to touch is where I want to have the Claymate. Okay, and then I want to let this soak in for about a minute because right now my hands are just a little bit too slippery and it makes it hard for me to deal with the package. So I'm going to set this aside and I'll tell you about lavender water. We're going to need to make special water for working with the clay to keep it from oxidizing. I put two drops of pure essential lavender oil in the water and I'm using distilled water and I'm going to want to refresh this every day. This is from a restaurant. Um, they use it for sugar packages but it's so perfect for a little paintbrush right there so that's what I use. And then this is a nice red sable brush. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this away because I don't want the package. And it's sealed on all four sides, but I just want to cut three of them off so that now I have something to work with. Okay, and already you can see I've got little bits that have fallen out of this package. And I'm going to work up on a, a work surface here so I can um, slide the crumbs off as they happen. Um, now what I want to do is I'm going to have my, I've got my plastic wrap all ready to go. I'm going to open up this clay and I'm just going to kind of test the moisture of it and press on it with my finger and if it doesn't um, make them, if it doesn't uh, stick to my finger then I know that clay is pretty good moisture content and it's okay to work with. Okay, so I can discard this and now I've got two bars. Each of these are 100 grams. I'm just going to break that in half. I'm going to take one of these and just wrap it up because I don't need to work with uh, the whole 200 grams at once. That's a little bit too much for me. So I'll just wrap this one up and set it aside. And I've got another piece of plastic wrap ready. So this guy, I'm going to break him in half. And then what I want to do is just sort of um, start kneading it, but I want to do it kind of slowly because if I push my fingers in too far, you see I'll get a little bit of mud happening because it kind of broke through the surface. Um, and I've tried putting it, you know, in the saran wrap and kneading it through that, but um, that doesn't really, that kind of makes a mess. So I just, a little bit slowly kind of, you know, press it down and making a little pancake. If, if, I can, if I can avoid these really wet areas, I can keep the mud off my hands. Anywhere that I touch it, though, I'm going to get a lot of mud. I'm not going to worry about that. I can clean that up later. Okay, so the idea here is that I'm, I'm kneading this clay to make it more pliable. But first what I want to do is I want to get all that wetness that's in the inside and kind of um, distribute it throughout the clay. So I'm just rolling it into sort of a ball. And this will get a little bit easier to deal with now. The texture of this clay is really nice. Sometimes uh, I find that I need to add 
a little bit of moisture right out of the package, but this one doesn't seem to need it. This one's very, very nice. So now you can see that all this clay, that even the little bits that got on my hands, are coming back up into the ball. That's what's nice about that. So this is this one ball here, and this one's about ready to go. So I'm just going to roll that into a nice little ball and set it aside to rest. Um, I'm going to put this in the middle. Now I don't want any air in here at all. So I'm going to make this really tight. And now I'll just roll this guy around here. I've got a little chip clip. I'm not sure what this is. It's some sort of a clip. But I'm going to use that to hold this ball closed. It's all the, the teeth on this are on the thick part here of the plastic, so it should be okay. Now I've got my other little bar, my 100 gram bar here. I'm going to take all these dry pieces and scoot those off. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Break the bar in half. And so this is really wet, so I want to avoid that. I don't know if you can see there's a little color difference here. I really want to, I don't want to smash this too flat. I just want to squeeze it a little bit so I can avoid getting my fingers all muddy. And I'll just make a pancake out of this one as well. I want to, I want to get it as thin as possible and then just roll these wet edges in using my thumbs mostly. There we go. And let's keep rolling this in. And you'll be able to see the little subtle difference. The edges, the outside edges is almost a little crusty. So once I can move it like this. And if I approach it this way, my hands stay really clean. Okay, so now here's something that happens when I'm working with the clay. My body heat is getting into this and this clay stiffens as it gets hot, so you'll notice the difference of a ball of clay that you've been touching and then switch to one that hasn't been touched. Um, there's quite a temperature difference. Okay, this one now I'm going to wrap up, and I'm going to go back to my first ball.